get into the meat of the Breeders' Cup and talk about the big race, the final race on the Saturday evening, which is the Breeders' Cup Classic. First one by Wild again in 1984 and we've seen some illustrious names on the Roll of Honour, the likes of Ghost Sapper, uh, Curlin, Inversor, Ravens Pass, Zenyatta as well. Let's start our preview of this year's renewal by having a look at the Pacific Classic. Field for the one million dollar TVG Pacific Classic sent on their way to the roar of the Del Mar crowd. The huge long shot riveting reason wanted that lead and he has it. Game on dude in a tight tad Ashrati after the start, but now game on dude moving up on the outside. Acadian is right there too. Suggestive boys racing between horses and here's rail trip in fifth. He's now four and a half off that leader who's trying to slow them down up front. Here's the filly Amani racing back fifth last, five off the leader, then Jay Cito. Doolahan's taken back third last. Richard's kid is all the way back second last, and last of all is Ware Sterling. Nine lengths covers them all. They head to the three-quarter pole, and David Flores has the longest shot in the field, riveting reason, showing the way. He's actually taking a nice hold and going along nicely up front. In the second spot is Suggestive Boy. On the far side, Game On Dude, and now here comes Game On Dude to put pressure on early. Game On Dude now takes on Riveting Reason past the three-quarter pole. In behind that, Suggestive Boy in third. Rail Trip has moved to the outside, Acadian down at the rail. The Philly Amani's in six, no more than four off the leader, though. Doolahan is right in behind that, and Richard's Kid five off the leaders. In behind that, Worth Sterling and Jay Cito is last. It's a compact field going past the three eights and game on dude kicks. Game on dude sets sail for home now. Suggestive boy is right there second. Riveting reason can find no more. Here's Doolahan with a nice run. He's four wide, but Doolahan, rail trip is in there. Amani comes under a ride behind that. Heads the turn for home in the TVG Pacific Classic. Game on, dude. Here comes Doolahan bounding home in the center of the track. Game on, dude. Briggs DP finds more. Doolahan closing on the outside. Game on, dude. And Doolahan in a thriller in the TVG Pacific Classic. Doolahan's got him. Doolahan absolutely perfectly ridden by Joel Rosario. Doolahan up to beat Game on, dude. So the Dale Romans train Dullahan beats Game On Dude by half a length wow. in the Pacific Classic. But the story of the race was the nightmare that Chantal Sutherland had on the runner-up. X-rated stuff from Sutherland, unfortunately, there. Wide on the first turn. Then she chased a meatball through suicidal fractions down the, the back straight. And then, to compound everything, dropped a rein, <laughs> one of her reins in the straight. Now, unfortunately, that has resulted in her losing the ride to Bejarano. Unfortunately for her, Fortunately for the horse, as Bejarano is a top-notch rider, to be fair to Chantel, she's had a very good career, but she's been found out, I think, in the, in the very best races. And um, I think this is to game on dude's advantage. I think he can show himself to be five or six pounds better than ever under his new rider. Yeah, it's fair to say he should have won the Pacific Classic, and since then, he's been very impressive in winning the awesome again stakes at Santa Anita. Yeah, he's champion of the West Coast, really. Mm -hmm. He won that prep race for the breeders in great style. That's the old... Goodwood handicap that he won there, the old grade one. Earlier he'd won the Hollywood Gold Cup, another massive West Coast prize. And he's a horse that's tremendously effective on his home court of Santa Anita. Last year in the Classic, he should have won that as well, I think. That was at Churchill Downs. Mm -hmm. Again, Chantel moved too soon, but wore down by a big stare in Drosselmeyer. I'm not a favorite backer, I'm not a chalk player, but this horse is going to take the world of beating. Sutherland off, Bejarano on, and Game On Dude at his favourite venue. He might be worth getting involved with. However, there are other leading contenders, and we saw some of them in the Whitney and in the Jockey Club Gold Cup as well. Fort Land, Ron the Greek, Flat Out, and Stay Thirsty. And they're off. And Endorsement is hustled out of there after that early lead, but Trickmeister is going to run with him as they hit the first turn in Fort Larned. Just outside the lead, he's third into the turn. Rule is fourth, Keish Electronica fifth. Hymnbook not too far from the pace today. Fifth and on the far outside, flat outs between those two. And they are now followed by Hunter's Bay and six lengths back to Ron the Greek. 
Ron the Greek is allowed to drop a dozen lengths from the lead as they make their way to the backstretch after a 23 and two opening quarter mile. So it's endorsement the leader. Right there in his hip pocket is Trickmeister. Fort Larned cruising not far beyond them on the outside third. Himbook just four lengths from the lead down the backstretch run. To his inside now is Rule, then Caixa Electronica, who's under a good hold there by Javier Castellano. And then Hunter's Bay has room down toward the inside. Flat out is allowed to relax. Beneath the Rosie Napravnik there and still trailing the field is Ron the Greek. He's about 11 lengths from the lead. Half up in 46 and four fifths seconds. Strong pace here as the field rounds the far turn. Up top, endorsement, Trickmeister and Fort Larned. They've been one, two, three, all the way around the track. A testing three-quarter mark in one, ten, and four. Him books in an all-out drive. And from the back of the pack, from the back of the pack, Ron the Greek is picking off horses one by one. He's spun very wide, though, by flat out. Then Caixa Electronica down toward the rail. Fort Larned comes away with the lead with a bold run at the 3 16 It's Fort Larned in front by five. Ron the Greek way out in the middle of the track. Hembook and flat out coming down to the finish with Fort Larned to catch. Fort Larned to catch, and they're not going to catch him. Fort Larned the winner by a diminishing length and a half. They're in the gate. And they're off. Stay Thirsty is hustled out of there. There goes Sam Pablo with his early speed. Ruler on Ice is also forwardly placed and under a busy ride. So around the first turn they go, and it's Stay Thirsty in front, Ruler on Ice, and Sam Pablo. Those three out there early on, and Fort Larned's not far behind them in fourth. And then Himbook settles back in fifth place. Flat out has reined in to run back sixth here, beyond a solid pace up front early on. Then it's a break of two and a half back to Anagan. And then at the back of the pack, Ron the Greek, who's already about 14 from the front. Fast Falcon and game ball. Three of them after that lead down the backstretch run. They put up a quarter together in 23 and two fifth seconds. So it's Stay Thirsty and Ruler on Ice, 1-2. San Pablo makes it three across the track. And Fort Larned lets those three battle out. He sits back in fourth place down the backstretch run. The half was up in a strong 47 and one fifth seconds. And then Flat Out, who's still under a good hold there. He's about six from the lead, followed by Himbook under the white hot hands of Johnny Velasquez. They're about seven from the front. Then farther back, stretch running Ron the Greek. He's still settled into an easy beat. He's drawn within nine lengths of the lead now. Adigan and Fast Falcon are moving in tandem with the half mile to go here. Long shot game ball trails the field. Stay thirsty, San Pablo. Fort Larned makes his move. There goes Fort Larned after that lead with three furlongs remaining here. Flat out, only four from the front. Then Himbook and Fast Falcon uncoiling that long stride of his. And he angles down toward the inside as the field comes to the top of the stretch. Stay thirsty, confronted by Fort Larned as the field turns for home in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Last year's winner, Flat Out, is right there now. He's third on the outside and driving hard. The three-year-old Fast Falcon fourth, one furlong to go. Stay thirsty, stay thirsty, still there. But here comes Flat Out, Flat Out on the outside, and Stay Thirsty, who's hanging on bravely. Stay Thirsty down inside, and Flat Out, who comes with the last gasp lunge to win. Flat Out got it by a flared nostril. Over Stay Thirsty. The Whitley run at Saratoga and the Jockey Club Gold Cup ran at Belmont Park. Uh, two races, both on dirt but providing different tests for the thoroughbred. Yeah, this is where the connoisseur who knows his American racing can really understand the races where someone just thinking that all American racetracks are the same will be making an error. Saratoga is a test of speed, like Santa Anita. Belmont is a test of stamina, primarily. Mm -hmm. And the Jockey Club Gold Cup, in particular, mile and a quarter, strongly run race often, real, real test of stamina. And that favoured flat out, didn't it, the winner, much more than mm. the previous race at Saratoga. Yeah, that was won by a Fort Land, who's basically a, a pacey horse and made just about every yard of the running, some would argue, got an easy lead. But he's really suited by a fast surface, the sort of surface he will get at Santa Anita. He made a big middle move when he then ran in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, but I don't think the surface suited him there. No, and let's talk about Ron the Greek, who also showed up better in the Whitney than he did in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. In his case, He's a horse with coarse form over the classic 10 phones. He won the big cap, the Santa Anita handicap, back in March. I think he too is a horse that will be favoured by the move from east to west. So I think in Fort Land and Ron the Greek, two horses, I think you can scrub out their Jockey Club 
Gold Cup debacles and expect them to do better. Mm. Whereas perhaps the winner is more of a stare. He was fifth last year. Flat out, I think he's a horse that's going to come out up a few pounds short. It was interesting to see what happened to Flat Out when he ran in the Whitney at Saratoga on that fast surface. He got behind, he got a long way behind, and then he finished his race off quite strongly, but he was able to lie up much closer to the pace when he ran in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and that really does show us the difference in the surfaces. Yeah, a horse that's favoured by the Belmont conditions is the runner-up in the Gold Cup, Stay Thirsty. He won the Travers at mm. Saratoga uh, the previous year, that's the three-year-old uh, test. He too perhaps can handle a faster surface as, as the Saratoga effort last year proves. But again, perhaps a horse that's a few pounds short of classic standard. He was beaten in the race last year. Yeah, he finished 11th last year. He might just come up a little bit short. Let's just talk about one other leading contender for this year's classic and it's Mucho Macho Man. This is an improving four-year-old and has to rank as a contender. He was beaten in the Woodward last time out, ran really well. The first two pulled well clear. Previous to that, he'd been very impressive at Belmont previous year he'd come through the ranks third in the Kentucky Derby he's an improving horse he's not far short of the standard required and we're short really of progressive horses he's won he could make an impact game on dude for you James I think this is the class act the jockey switch back to his home court I think this is his classic Breeders' Cup Classic run on Sunday morning or Saturday night, depending on your point of view, is the culmination of two days at Santa Anita for the Breeders' Cup. It's over 10 furlongs. There are 12 runners. Paul plays in one, flat out in two, Alpha in three, Fort Larned in four, Game on Jude in five, Brilliant Speed in six, Handsome Mike in seven, Nonios in eight, Richard's Kid in nine, Ron the Greek in ten, Mucho Macho Man in 11, and To Honour and Serve in 12. And they bet like this. William Hill have Game on Dude as the two to one favourite. Flat out at six to one. Mucho Macho Man sevens along with Ron the Greek. Fort Larned nine to one. To honour and serve eleven to one. Sixteen to one and upwards the rest.